All right, we're going to start looking at chapter 17, part B. This will mainly focus on the physiology of the heart. So first and foremost, we're going to start talking about the electrical events of the heart. And the heart is able to depolarize and contract without any nervous system input. This is possible because the heart contains pacemaker or non-contractile cells that can spontaneously depolarize. Now we do use the autonomic nervous system to modulate the heart rate, really kind of bring it down a little bit, but it's not needed. The heart would still continue to beat without that autonomic nervous system intervention. The coordinated heartbeat is a function of two things. The presence of those gap junctions that will spread the spontaneous depolarization from the non-contractile pacemaker cells to the contractile myocytes or cardiomyocytes, and also the intrinsic cardiac conduction system. The intrinsic cardiac conduction system is just a network of pacemaker cells, a network of those non-contractile cells that were able to spontaneously depolarize. So essentially what we need to initiate and distribute impulses and coordinate the depolarization and contraction of the heart is a system or a sequence of depolarization made up of these non-contractile pacemaker cells. We're going to call those cells kind of autorhythmic because they're making their own action potential, and gap junctions. Because if we have this spontaneous depolarization, it's no good to us or the heart, since that's what we're talking about, it's no good to the heart if we can't spread it. And we can spread these ions throughout the entire heart through the gap junctions, which are found at the intercalated disc connecting cardiac myocytes. So the action potential initiation by pacemaker cells is important. Because again, the cardiac pacemaker cells spontaneously depolarize, and it's this depolarization that is then spread to the contractile cells. And we're going to call these spontaneous depolarizations pacemaker potentials or prepotentials. And this pacemaker potential begins when potassium channels are closed, but slow sodium channels are open. And this would cause an influx of sodium ions into cardiac myocytes, and that would make their interiors more positive. That would lead to depolarization at about negative 40 millivolts. That would be threshold for these pacemaker cells. Depolarization would cause the calcium channels in the cardiac myocytes to open, allowing an influx of calcium and lead to a rising phase of an action potential. And then the potassium channels open, allow the efflux of potassium and the cells would become negative again. That would be repolarization. So let's look at these steps again. We have the pacemaker potential, that's the spontaneous depolarization or slow depolarization that's due to both the opening of sodium channels and the closing of potassium channels. Then once we reach threshold at negative 40, we get depolarization, we get an action potential in the pacemaker potential cells, and that would cause calcium channels to open, and we'd get an influx of calcium. That influx of calcium would eventually taper off when those channels close or begin inactivating, but the potassium channels open. That would allow potassium efflux, and that would bring us back to kind of a repolarized state or bring the membrane potential back to its most negative voltage. So our steps in a pacemaker cell is a spontaneous depolarization called a pacemaker potential, reaching threshold and then a depolarization, and then resetting. So kind of similar to what we saw in skeletal muscle, except for that pre-potential. So that pre-potential, that pacemaker potential, is because of leaky, slow opening sodium channels that allow a slow build towards threshold before we get what we're more familiar with, a depolarizing and then repolarizing state. Now, this sequence of excitation is looking at pacemaker cells. This is not just a sequence of excitation, it's a sequence built into a system. So we're going to have connected pacemaker cells also, or non-contractile cells, same thing. We're gonna have a system of cardiac pacemaker cells pass impulses from one to another. And we're gonna start with the pacemaker of the heart or the sinoatrial node, also known as the SA node. It depolarizes first, so it's going to be what sets the pace. That's the pace of the heart rate. So the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. It sits in the right atrial wall and it depolarizes the fastest compared to the rest of the system. 
found in the rest of the myocardium. Now, even as we look at this intrinsic cardiac conduction system, this sequence of excitation, keep in mind that these pacemaker cells, these non-contractile pacemaker cells, at the same time will be passing this excitation into nearby contractile cells. So the SA node fires, so it creates a prepotential and depolarizes, and that excitation is going to be shared not only to the contractile cells of the right atrium, but over to the left atrial wall as well. From the SA node as our pacemaker, the impulse will then pass to the AV node. But we do need to know a general location for the SA node. It's in the right atrial wall. You do need to know that it's the pacemaker of the heart because it depolarizes the fastest of any of the other pacemaker cells. It generates an impulse at about 75 beats per minute. We're calling that sinus rhythm. If you ask what the average heart rate is, they're gonna say sinus rhythm or 75 beats per minute. Now, heart rate can be a little bit above that or below, but that's going to be what is generated by the SA node when it's tempered by extrinsic factors. What we mean by extrinsic factors is the nervous system is gonna bring down that kind of inherent rate a little bit. If it wasn't for the nervous system, the inherent rate generated by the SA node would be about 100 beats per minute. And again, as we leave the SA node, the pacemaker of the heart, the signal will not only be going to the contractile cells, but this pacemaker signal will go to other pacemaker cells so that then those pacemaker cells can spread it out. So as we leave the SA node, we'll move this spontaneous depolarization to the AV node. The AV node or atrioventricular node is located in the inferior interatrial septum, usually depicted on the right side of the heart. It delays impulses approximately 0.1 seconds, or you could say 10 milliseconds. Now, for that reason, because of this delay, we actually call the atrioventricular node or AV node the gatekeeper of the heart. And the reason that we would want to gatekeep or slow down this pacemaker impulse is we want to ensure that the atria have time to contract completely before the ventricles contract. So we want to make sure the atria contract before the ventricles and a 0.1 second delay allows this to happen. The inherent rate of the AV node is 50 beats per minute. So in the absence of the SA node, the inherent heart rate would be 50 beats per minute because it would be the AV node that sets that rate. Then the signal would travel to the AV bundle or bundle of Hiss and then to the right and left bundle branches. The bundle of Hiss or AV bundle is in the superior interventricular septum and it's the only electrical connection between atria and ventricle. I'm gonna say that again. The AV bundle is the only electrical connection between the atria and ventricles. Otherwise, the atrium ventricles are not connected via gap junctions. This is the only connection that we can use to get these spontaneous depolarizations into the ventricles. So major issues can occur if there are problems with the AV bundle or bundle of Hiss. Once the signal is given over to the bundle of Hiss, which is located in kind of that top of that piece of tissue between the ventricles or the interventricular septum, it'll then move into the right and left bundle branches. These are two pathways that head towards the apex, carrying that impulse all the way towards the point of the heart. And these two pathways are found within the interventricular septum, just below that superior portion that house the AV bundle. Then the last part of the intrinsic conduction system is the subendocardial conducting network, also referred to as the Purkinje fibers. That's actually how I learned this part of the intrinsic conduction system. You'll see Purkinje fibers in a lot of older textbooks. If you have a fifth or sixth edition textbook that you inherited, you may be seeing Purkinje fibers. But be aware of the new term, subendocardial conducting network. The Purkinje fibers are located in the outer ventricular walls, and because there is a thicker left outer ventricular wall, we find that the subendocardial conducting network is more elaborate on the left side of the heart. But the subendocardial conducting network is going to complete the pathway through the interventricular septum, which was made up by the left or right bundle branches, that was headed towards the apex and go to those outer ventricular walls. It's going to kind of set the heart rate at about 30 beats per minute in the absence of AV node input. And we're going to see that as the subendocardial conducting network depolarizes, ventricular contraction immediately follows. And we're going to see that contraction is kind of like a tube of toothpaste. We're going to squeeze from the apex up toward the atria. So the ventricles contract 
and push blood up towards the semilunar valves and the major arteries. So the process from initiation beginning at that SA node at our pacemaker all the way to completion or going through the subendocardial conducting network depolarizing takes about 0.22 seconds or 220 milliseconds, either way. So let's look at this image. So it has our entire cardiac conduction system, intrinsic cardiac conduction system laid out for us. And we're seeing kind of the action potential succession during one heartbeat. So the entire intrinsic cardiac conduction system would be run through during one heartbeat. And then for the next heartbeat, we do it again. So just imagine kind of an electrical signal lighting up these pieces, these five pieces. And as these pieces light up, all of the nearby contractile tissue in the myocardium is being given kind of an electrical jolt. And when they're given that electrical jolt, they contract. So that's what this intrinsic cardiac conduction system is for. It's to basically have these cells called pacemaker cells spontaneously depolarize in sequence and spread this spontaneous action potential excitation to the contractile cells. And, and because of the gap junctions between cardiac myocytes, this sharing is useful and it can cause the heart to beat all at once or as a unit, but it is sequential. So we say beat as a unit, beat all at once, just to kind of get an idea of what the heart's doing and why this is important. But keep in mind what we mean by as a unit or all at once is we mean the double pumps are gonna to beat together. That when the atrial on one side of the heart beats, the atrial on the other side is gonna beat. That when the ventricle on the left beats, that the ventricle on the right is going to beat. But don't confuse this with all chambers contracting or beating at once. The atria will contract and then relax. And then the ventricles will contract and relax. The only two overlapping phases are atrial relaxation and ventricle contraction. So we could say the atria contract, move blood into the ventricles. While the atria are relaxing, the ventricles contract, move blood into the major arteries. That's happening on both sides. That's contracting as a unit or beating as a unit. So let's just run through the intrinsic cardiac conduction system one more time. We have the SA node, and then from there, impulses move to the AV node. From there, impulses move to the AV bundle. From there, impulses move through the bundle branches left and right. And then from there, we're going to have the impulse finish up in the subendocardial conducting network. And if we kind of just give some clues or hints or helpful information for all these, we would say that the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. The AV node is the gatekeeper of the heart. The AV bundle is also known as the bundle of His, and it's the only electrical connection between the atria and ventricles. The bundle branches conduct impulses to the apex, and the subendocardial conducting network is going to depolarize the contractile cells of both ventricles and is followed up by ventricular contraction. All right, and then last but not least, let's just mention some homeostatic imbalances associated with this intrinsic conduction system. One would be arrhythmias or irregular heart rhythms, it's just when we have uncoordinated atrial and ventricular contractions. One type of arrhythmia may be fibrillation, which is rapid irregular contractions. The heart kind of looks like, I don't know, chambers with worms squirming in them. Kind of a ball of worms is a common term I've heard. The heart becomes useless for pumping blood because the atria and the ventricle are contracting at the same time. They're irregularly contracting, circulation's gonna cease, and treatment's gonna be defibrillation, basically kind of shocking the heart, giving it a clean slate, hoping that once we shock the heart, it's able to start a regular normal depolarization. There's also a defective SA node. This could cause, be caused by an ectopic focus or an abnormal pacemaker that takes over pacing. If you drink coffee, this is actually happening. So you can develop this called extrasystole or premature contraction because of excessive caffeine or nicotine use. And it's temporary after the effects of the drug wears off. The SA node should take over. If the AV node takes over because something's wrong with the SA node, it could set a junctional rhythm, which is much slower. 
extrasystole would be the opposite of the junctional rhythm from the F AV node, it'd be much slower, whereas extrasystole would be a premature contraction because of the ectopic focus taking over from the FA node, but it doesn't cause a delay in the next impulse necessarily. It's going to speed up impulses and everything else has a problem catching up. To reach ventricles, an impulse has to pass through the AV node. And remember, we established that the only electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles is through the AV node. So it's if it's defective, there's problems, and that problem is heart block. Heart block can occur when few impulses are getting to the ventricles, called partial block, or no impulses, which is a total block. And that would mean the ventricles beat at their own intrinsic rate, which is pretty slow. It's too slow to maintain adequate circulation. So treatment would be an artificial pacemaker, which relinks or couples the atria to the ventricles. All right, next we're going to be in looking at modifying the basic rhythm of the heart. We established kind of the intrinsic cardiac conduction system. We looked at the SA node. We looked at it as a pacemaker. We talked about sinus rhythm at 75 beats per minute. So that's our kind of intrinsic basic rhythm of the heart. But next we're gonna look at extrinsic innervation of the heart and how we kind of modify that basic sinus rhythm. So make sure to watch part two.